up there, <laughs> traveled by water here, uh, 6th of November, uh, basic, got some weather coming in, wind gust to 38 knots, and, uh, and a couple inches of rain, so I was hoping to make it up into a nice uh, protected creek. But uh, I'm, I'm not going to be, I, I don't have enough daylight to make it to my creek. So I'm just going to have to find somewhere in beach. Uh, so that's what I'm doing right now for somewhere to beach. So stay tuned. I've reached a familiar beach that I've beached at before, a sand beach. Uh, I don't like staying, I don't like staying at the same place too, uh, uh, you know, too many times, but uh, it's getting dark and uh, the weather is getting kind of not so nice and uh, come to think of it that's the same reason I stopped here the last time uh, so I guess it's in a good spot I think what I'll do is I'll just go in on the motor nice and slow I got my Bruce anchor ready to go though if I need it all right so I was getting uh, blown sideways so I decided to throw out my uh, Bruce anchor and we'll see if it holds and if it does then I can kind of work the boat in on the anchor I don't think it's holding. Oh wait, it just grabbed. Okay, so there you can see I'm swinging in. And then I'll just be able to work my way back down on the anchor. Okay, kill the engine, don't need it. So all I did there was I threw, you know, uh, maybe 30 feet of line and four feet of chain over the side and uh, that swung the bow into the wind and stopped me the outboard off. Always remember to shut off the fuel when you're popping your outboard off. I'm not sure how deep this is. Oh, it's not very deep at all. Okay. Perfect. Um, I think what I'm going to do next is, I'm not sure. Uh-oh, boat's blowing. A Bruce Anchor's really holding, that's for sure. Show you the setup here. Okay, there's the boat tied up to a signpost. That was on the beach, and then I got a stern anchor line out, holding my bow, my stern out into the uh, holding my stern out. All right, one more quick look at that without the uh, dog whining. So there's the setup. Bow's tied off to a signpost. The stern is being held off by a Bruce anchor and about uh, probably about 50 feet of road out. Uh, and obviously it's pretty shallow. So yeah, that seems like a nice place to spend the night actually. Uh, it's uh, starting to get cool though, so I might get uh, camp set up. All right. Well, that took a while, but we're uh, semi set up for the night now. Um, not 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 set up, but uh, we've got uh, the canvas up, and uh, I, I've got the stern anchored off, and I've got the bow tied up, and uh, you know it's kind of uh, a little bit, you know, it's not wet in here, and uh, there's no wind or very little. So uh, now we can relax a little bit. I got some light working. I got a flashlight working that I bought. Uh, it got dark really quickly. Um, so it's just the dog and I for this trip. Uh, uh, it's too nasty for, for children. So uh, yeah, it's just the dog and I. And uh, I guess we are going to make some uh, pea soup uh, for, well, both of us. And he's got some kibble too. Um, and we're just gonna relax and enjoy the evening on the water. 
uh, and I'll uh, show you what I do while, uh, while we do it. And uh, you can see what it's like to camp on a small boat in um, November in eastern Ontario. It's actually pretty comfy in here. It'll be even more comfier when I get the stove on. All is good. I know I've kind of shown off the uh, interior of this little boat before. Uh, but uh, I don't know if I've done it in this kind of weather, you know, where you got uh, the strong winds and the rain. Uh, I haven't gotten everything fully zipped up because uh, because of the cold, the canvas is really taut and it's hard for me to, you know, kind of tension it. So that's why I'm kind of leaving uh, a few things uh, unzipped, but they're all on the downwind side. Everything on the upwind side is uh, neatly zip zipped up. All right, so now what I've done is I've uh, changed out of my good dry suit into my uh, hip waders. Uh, the reason I'm going with the hip waders instead of just jeans is, for one thing, this isn't a self-bailing cockpit, so it's often a little bit wet, and it's too cold to be wet. And uh, the other reason is the dog's going to have to get off to do his business uh, throughout the evening. Uh, you know, it, it's early yet. It's only like 5, 5.30 or something, maybe 6. So he's going to have to get on and off a couple of times, so... He's kind of spoiled, so I carry him off, but uh, I need my hip waders on to do that so that I don't get all soaking wet while I'm doing that. So, yeah, uh, out of the dry suit, it's folded up somewhere protected where it won't get burned or something while I'm cooking or cut, and uh, hip waders on. So this is no different than any other cold weather activity. Um, if you want to stay warm, you got to put on a toque and uh, layer up. So I've got on... Uh, three layers I got a synthetic next to my skin and then I got a sweatshirt which isn't you know it's not recommended I mean wool's what you want but whatever I, it's dry I haven't gotten it wet and I don't plan on getting it wet so it works and then I've got a fleece on I do have a shell on board uh, and a dry suit and I've also got a alpaca wool sweater um, and two sleeping bags so uh, so at any rate, I, I could be being more cautious, but, you know, it, it's not cold enough for me to be really worried, so I, I'm just being a little bit casual. Well, I decided to uh, seal up some of the gaps in the uh, in the canvas. Uh, I don't mind admitting it's, it's a pretty cold night. Um, cold and damp and windy. Uh, well, you know, it's November, so that's what you would expect. Uh... It seems like the wind's down a little bit now, too. Still a little bit of a drip through my canvas, but, uh, yeah, comfortable. Nice night to be on the water. Well, all right, I've decided to move into the uh, my very messy sailboat cabin uh, for the evening. Uh, the dog's been in here, well, he moved in pretty well as soon as we tied up. Uh, it's, it's pretty chilly, so I've... Uh, pulled my sleeping bag up to my uh, waist and uh, now I'm just relaxing uh, we'll uh, get into some dinner here sooner or later um, I brought lots of munchies lots of snacks I got chips and salami and uh, uh, hot soup and I've got dog food so uh, you know I'll be well fed and uh, now that I'm inside, it's, it's quite a bit warmer than it was out in the uh, cockpit. Well, well, that's it. That's it for me. Well, there she is. First look at her in the early morning light. Uh, she did fine at her anchorage. No surprise there. Um, the Bruce anchor held the stern off uh, off the shore like it was supposed to. Uh, the bow stayed put because it was, well, tied to a signpost. Um, yeah, nice comfortable night. Everybody should have a boat with a camper top. It's awesome. So one thing I should mention is uh, 
when I'm hanging around camp, I don't like to wear my good dry suit in case I uh, burn it or cut it or something like that. So I carry a good pair of uh, hip waders with me. Um, th these are a lot cheaper than a dry suit and uh, for around camp they work great. They're heavy duty. Uh, they're, they're more resistant to, uh, you know, cuts and that sort of thing. And, uh, you know, they, they work up until about waist deep water for messing around with the boat, getting in and out of the boat, dealing with the dog, uh, dealing with big puddles because it's, it's been pretty, pretty rainy. So, yeah, it's something you might want to consider having on board as uh, kind of an in-between measure for when uh, you don't quite need your dry suit but you need more than a pair of running shoes is uh, hip waders. You can pick them up at Gabella's, Canadian Tire, or whatever, for a pretty reasonable price. Here's kind of an interesting look at the uh, high water mark over the last uh, few days from the wind and uh, rain and waves and whatnot. Uh, you can see uh, the water was getting pretty far up the beach here. Uh, having this stern anchor like uh, line out like this. You can see it held the uh, rudder about uh, oh a good four or five inches off the bottom. Uh, so that meant that I wasn't pounding up and down on my rudder all night. So that's uh, that's kind of a slick setup. Uh, I'll, I'll show you the anchor road from another angle here. Yeah, there's the anchor coming off the stern. Uh, it's coming at about, uh, I guess what would you call that? That would be about um, an 80 degree angle out back into the river off the beach. Uh, I wasn't so sure about uh, the practicality of this anchor last night, but now that I look at it in the daylight, I think it worked pretty well because I'm going to be able to pull myself off backwards with the anchor and uh, get the engine started once I'm uh, already out on the water. And the uh, Bruce anchor held really well all night. So here's what my uh, ultra disgusting semi-toxic looking bilge looks like this morning. So uh, first thing I'm going to do is bail that out so I'm not standing in ankle deep water. Uh, like pretty much everybody, I just use a uh, plastic jug cut in half as a bailing can. You can't buy anything this good. All right. First things first, I'm going to need some uh, coffee or some uh, coveffi. Uh, I left the uh, side and back panels up on my uh, camper top uh, because there is a cool, a very cool breeze coming off the water. So by leaving the side and back up, it lets me uh, cook in a little bit of comfort without that... Uh, wind freezing me. I, I'm, I'm not big on cooking uh, inside the boat. Uh, I, I just don't feel like it's a big enough space to have a large open flame so I was cooking the cockpit. Well now that I've got my coffee going, um, anybody who's ever watched my videos before know that my uh, breakfast tastes range from uh, sausage to sausage of some type. Uh, either uh, kielbasa or salami. Anyway, today we're going with some salametti. Hot, hot salametti. Uh, it should be nice and spicy. Good way to start the morning. Well, I'm absolutely starving, but one thing I never do with salami is rush it. It's got to be cooked just perfectly and then dig in. No need to rush things. The way you can tell your salami is properly cooked is by the smell. I can smell it, the dog can smell it. It's ready. Well, I'll tell you, nothing perks a sailor up in the morning like some uh, extra spicy salami and a couple of cups of uh, strong instant coffee. 
ready to face the day. All right, well now it's officially cold. The uh, forecast was for the uh, temperature to drop throughout the day. And uh, that's certainly what it's done. It feels pretty close to freezing to me. So I'm going to start taking down this camper top, get underway, and I think pull the boat out of the water. Alright, so this is cool. All I had to do to get away from the uh, beach was give the boat a little shove and now it's swinging out onto the river uh, and I assume it's going to stop on its anchor. Which is somewhere over that way but the current's blowing us out into the river so I thought we just might watch this whole thing. Okay, so we're just blowing in the wind I don't have my uh, engine uh, installed. Um, I don't have my mast up. I'll wait till we come to a stop on our anchor. And boom, there it is. Okay, so there's the anchor holding us. A little bit of a bounce there because we came onto it so hard and it's holding so well. Now I'm gonna put the engine on and uh, get it running. I just let the anchor do its job. Okay, and I've got, uh, I always keep the motor tied on. Uh, that's a safety line in case I drop the boat motor in, but you can see the motor's not very heavy. Check for gas. Looks like it could use a little bit of gas. Okay, so there's the motor all gassed up. Uh, fuel vent open. Fuel valve on. We're still hanging on our anchor. I set this to 50%. It's cold, so I'm going to give it some choke. Yeah, that started up really nicely. Okay, so now the next thing I'm going to do is I can bring in the anchor. Alright, we're coming into dock here shortly. Uh, I'm going to film it because docking here is interesting at this time of the year because the floating dock's been removed and the only thing left is, uh, well you've, you've got a kind of parallel park along the shoreline but if you go too far forward there's rocks, if you go too far back there's the boat ramp. And uh, and this boat doesn't have reverse, so it's always uh, a little bit challenging. And it's windy, really windy. OK, 
okay right now. My build board's still down. Okay, I'm gonna pull my build board up. Now we'll blow sideways. Okay, that went well. All right, well that's uh, that's how to camp on a boat in cold weather. Um, well, we're you know we're well into November here, so uh, you know the sailing season's definitely uh, coming to an end. I mean, we can sail day sail up into December on nice days, but I have a funny feeling this will be my last overnight trip for the season. It's just getting too cold to uh, to really enjoy the overnights, you know, ice pellets and, and things freezing and cold winds and whatnot. Here comes a big, big gust right now. Yeah, that's the kind of weather it is at this time of the year. Okay, that's camping on a boat in cold weather. Thank you for watching the Travel Puddle Habitat.